What's going on, guys? AJ Tucker here with AJ Self Defense. And by now, you have all heard about the Vanessa Gillian story. Very tragic, very brutal murder, worst case scenario. They recently found um, her remains and figure out the way that she died. I'm not going to get into all that. You can go, you can Google it, you can see many videos just going in more detail about that. So the other day I was thinking about how the military is set up and about how they cover up these things. They cover up sexual harassment uh, to the point to where it can really get to this point. And I was trying to think to myself, it's like, man, you know, what can be done about this? Like, yeah, of course, they have to put more things in place. And then I was thinking to myself very briefly, you know, maybe they can have all female units. And I quickly, I quickly trashed that thought because I was like, nah, that's not going to work because it doesn't matter, you know, the sex. It can be, you know, you can be an all-female unit and still run into some of the same problems or even worse problems. And as I was thinking about this, this story popped up about Betsy Scolier or Bet Betsy Shaw. I don't know how to, I'll just call her Betsy. She said this in response to people grieving over the death um, and what happened, the injustice that happened to uh, Vanessa Gillian. You guys are kidding, right? Sexual harassment is the price of admission for women into the good old boy club. If you're going to cry like a snowflake about it, you're going to pay the price. I saw that and I had to read it about 10 times. I, I turned my head to the left, turned my head to the right, trying to make sense out of what she was saying. And I could not believe that she said it. And then after a while, I could believe that she said it. How many women out there in the military? Not saying, you know, all, but there's there's a handful. How many women in the military um, that has that type of mindset. They've been in for, you know, 15 to 20 years. They're a little older. You know, they're in their mid-50s or whatever. I don't know how old she is. I tried to find it, but I couldn't find it. I did a poll the other day on my self-defense page. And so, you know, I was asking women who were veterans, like, hey, this scenario, have you been through harassment or did you have a really good unit? What could be done differently? And it was crazy about how many women um, posted on that page and you know just talking about yeah they went through harassment this is what they did to go through harassment and they just thought it was normal and it's just part of the military so it's obviously something that goes on but what do you do what do you do if you're a brand new soldier like Vanessa who goes in you know full of aspiration full of motivation and all you want to do is work and move up into the ranks and make a difference and all of a sudden you have to deal with this type of stuff from your leadership the person that's over you, your sergeant, is sexually harassing you and, and just doing all sorts of things to the point to where you have to report it. And even though this woman is in the Air Force, she is a higher ranking official. I'm not saying that I, I, I do feel that, that it's a handful of small, a handful of women, just a small percentage of women in the military that feel this way. I feel that most women are on the side of, yes, we should not be sexually harassed. We should just be able to go in and do our jobs. But look, this woman right here, she's a freaking lieutenant colonel in the Air Force, and she has this mindset. So Vanessa goes into the military, and she's trying to protect her country, but there's nobody in the ranks, in her upline, that is out there to protect her. And women like this is the problem. Like, they keep this stuff going, man. They can, they can really change, turn things around, but they just kind of accept it. Um, you know, since it happened to them, it should happen to somebody else. This mindset, I've seen this before. I've seen this victim blaming before in judges around her age where women are trying to, uh, you know, press charges on somebody for raping them. And the judge goes in on them. The, the lawyer doesn't even have to do it. The judge goes in on these young girls. And the first thing they do is say, hey, you know, was there alcohol involved? Where were you? Oh, you went into the room with him um, and this and that. Well, you know, you kind of bought this on yourself and they give people light charges, not even just about like privilege. I've seen cases where, you know, the guy didn't have any money. The guy may have been black. Uh, Latino, brown, or whatever, and they're still getting off because women have the mindset of Betsy over here. Nobody, I mean, nobody in the world deserves to die because, you know, man or woman, because they're going to report continued sexual harassment. She didn't know what else to do. And you got people like this, high ranking, that has this type of mindset. <laughs> So absolutely, man, programs need to be put in place very rigorously. 
um, and fanatically to stop to end sexual harassment around the world, but also like specifically in the military. Um, it just goes on too much. You know, the ratio is just, to men to women is just too high. And, you know, one thing is she write, she's right about, they do have a good old boy system, but it does not need to be accepted. It needs to be taken down. Anyway, that's all I got, man. Asia Tucker, self-defense. I'll see you next time.